Today I am so excited. We're gonna be doing one of my favorite dishes, grill boar copa steak. Grilling over fire, it's so innate inside of me. In Hmong families, we have these huge gatherings. This big grill, fire and the smoke and the sizzling. It was very iconic. There's something very beautiful about cooking over wood fire. It's deeper than monk food to me. It's legacy. My dad told us stories as kids in Laos that they would hunt for wild boar. We call it copa because it's a fancy Italian word for the cut of meat that it is. So on the boar, it's kind of on the upper shoulder. I really love using the copa because it has this intermuscular fat in there that can withstand that high heat. Now it's not a meat that everyone's used to or familiar with, but if you can get your hands on it, it's one of my favorites and it's delicious and anybody can do it. What we're gonna do first is we're just gonna make the marinade for it. And it's a very simple marinade. We start with fish sauce, right? It's gonna give you that rich, deep umami flavor. And then we got our oyster sauce. We throw our oyster sauce right in there. We have some shallots, garlic. Cilantro stem is very important. You don't throw it away. A lot of people waste it, they throw it away. I, I jokingly say it's like the flavor highway, right? Cause it's rooted and then all that flavor comes through and it hits the leaves. The next thing that we have is lemongrass. It's got that, you know, very kind of a like fruity flavor to it. So we're gonna throw lemongrass in there. You know, I just add a little oil in there. The oil helps spread the marinade around. So we're gonna take that marinade and we're gonna set it to the side. Next thing we do is we have this copa steak. Wild boar, it's a little leaner. Some people say it has like a gamier taste. When I'm talking about the intermuscular fat, you see all those little stripes. That's what you want. As it drips, it's gonna hit the fire and it's gonna create that smoke. It's gonna be that really delicious flavor. So get some plastic wrap, put it over your board. And then you have your mallet, you're hitting, and you're kind of moving to the side, okay? So that's very important. You're not just going down. This is really great for relieving some stress. After a long day of being around coworkers, you want to pound it down so it's thinner like this and it makes that grilling process so much faster. So the next step we're doing is we're gonna marinate it. A little salt, remember always salt and pepper from about six inches up. Flip it to the other side. A little pepper. Massage that marinade right in. You want it to get to all the nooks and crannies. You let it marinate for two or three hours, but I would recommend you go overnight. Once the marinade has time to just really penetrate and get inside there and get all those flavors together, we get this hot grill going and we're gonna throw it right on the grill. We got this hot half here, you can totally see. Grab your steak, throw it on. That sound, that's like, that's the sound you want. You know, you hear that. Oh, I mean, this is the smell of my childhood here. So you take a peek at it, oh, you see it starts caramelizing a little bit. You're probably looking at like three to four minutes, and then after that, you wanna flip it or you wanna keep checking it. No grill is perfect, like no person is perfect. So what you wanna do is you wanna keep adjusting uh, the meat, the protein, moving it along. All those juices are hitting your coals, it's creating the smoke, and that smoke is really gonna help cut through uh, some of that flavor on the board here. When you're grilling, the number one rule is you gotta trust your intuition. It's almost an instinctive way of cooking. It's about believing in yourself and understanding how your grill works. And what that's gonna take is time. That's like the biggest thing, it's taking time. I keep flipping it. You're looking for that char, you're looking for that cook. It's almost ready. So one of the biggest issues when it comes to grilling is people, when they take the meat right off the grill, they cut right into it and they eat it. What I say is let it rest. And then we're gonna slice it up. We're gonna grab some tiger bite sauce, some sticky rice, we can get our vegetables, and then we're gonna get eating here. This is like the most iconic Hmong dish ever. You know, mom and dad would make this meal on the weekend go visit some friends. To be a Hmong boy, standing with your uncles and your dad outside grilling pork over a fire, it was kind of that rite of passage, you know, it's like a son going out his father and, and catching his first fish. And every time I'm around the grill and I'm cooking, like, that's what I'm feeling. 
you were one of the guys and you sat really close, you know, your dad or your uncle will slice off a little piece and hand it to you, you know, after he dips it in that, you know, that green tiger bite sauce. And it was almost like this communion moment. And it's just a big part of our childhood growing up. When I have those flavors in my mouth and it hits me, it takes me back to mom and dad's table. I'm gonna take another bite. This is too good not to. I hope you can try this at home.